slowly one of them decided to show me his badge that he's actually MI5. So I'm actually working with the big boys. There are different ways that the government, the police and British institutions can deal with people considered radical. De-radicalise them, arrest them, control them, recruit them, silence them. So what does each involve? What works and what might backfire? I've been examining each of these measures, asking which are successful and speaking to the people subject to them. They have views that many consider offensive, but that's why they're called radical. Radicals are useful to the security services. They have unique access to groups considered potentially dangerous, and so can inform on them. I've come to meet someone who says MI5 have tried to recruit him. He's a 25-year-old British Muslim of Indian heritage. We meet in a disused restaurant because he says he doesn't want to be seen outside with a woman who's not his wife. She's here watching the interview. He alleges that MI5 first approached him three years ago after a convoy to Gaza and then a subsequent trip to Turkey. What did they do and say? First, um, they just said that we're community cohesion officers. So we just want to speak to you regarding what's going on in the community. Um, and then slowly one of them decided to show me his badge that he's actually MI5. So I'm actually working with the big boys rather than just little petty police officers. Um, but I told him I wasn't really interested, it's not, it's not really something that I want to get into. But they just try and big you up and make you feel special. Like, um, oh you're very well educated, you're very well travelled. I'm not very well educated, I've just got GCSEs. And then they're saying that, you know, you don't have to do anything extraordinary. All you have to do is just start living in the community the way you're doing. Just go to the mosque, you know, just... If anyone's doing something that you feel suspicious, then you can tell us about that. Or we just want your views on what's going on in the news. So if we've got stories that we see in the news about girls running off to Syria or something like that, they'd want to meet up at random times and they make it in such a way that they tell you to come to a certain place and then from there they tell you right walk 10 meters down the road and then take a left and then go down that road and then take a right when you get there then give us a call so they're just trying to make sure that no one's following and then yeah they just just really make you feel really welcome like you know you're you're the most important person in the world and without you they can't do anything you've been talking to them about the caliphate and girls going to Syria, it's fairly recent stuff. Yeah, uh, well, when you say talking, I was actually talking to them. That's the question that were asked to me, but I didn't have much of an answer to give um, because it's against my religion uh, to work alongside, uh, you know, uh, the security services against Muslims. Do you consider yourself to have radical views? It depends where you stand. If you're not practicing Muslim, you'll think I'm radical because I follow the Quran and Sunnah the way it's been sent down. Like what? Like what? Yeah, for example, um, women, uh, they're supposed to cover their face, they sh should wear the niqab, and they should wear the abaya, full covering. But do you think that's why they wanted you, because you're strict? No, it's because I'm young and I'm in the community. They have to recruit these people. If you are dealing with terrorist or radical networks, you have to be able to recruit somebody who has that, those contacts and has that experience which allows them to infiltrate and to gather that intelligence. Now these people might not necessarily be your model citizen and might not necessarily willingly volunteer to sign up um, to be an MI5 agent. So you have to have some sort of leverage or some sort of coercion to win them over. What sort of tactics do the security services use to get these people on board? It can be a range of things. It can be appealing to a sense of patriotism. 
It can be bribery. It can be blackmail. We saw these tactics used in Northern Ireland, for example, when they were trying to recruit and turn uh, radicals back during the Troubles. Did they offer you money? They offer you like £100 an hour or something like that to go and see them. Um, £100 an hour? Yeah. That's a lot? Not really. Because, um, you know, you live in this world for how many years? 60, 70 years. Just a day of judgment is 50,000 years. So why would I sell my faith for £200 or £100? Would you pass on information to them if you thought that someone was a problem, someone was dangerous? It's not my job to do that. They get paid for that. That's their job. They should find out. So if you thought someone was wanting to go to Syria or planning something in this country, you wouldn't pass it on? It's none of my business. I don't get paid for that. Do you understand why they want people like you as informants? I can understand, but I think uh, they should have a recruitment drive where people are willing to go and put their name down rather than harassing them into do doing something. Because force never works. We would be under threat if this country could keep their nose out of other people's business. What do you mean by that? We went and bombed a country to a base in Afghanistan. Why wouldn't they want to hit you back? Has it affected your loyalty to this country, the way you've been treated? I was just born here, so I live here. Until recently, well, there was a government of the locals saying, if you don't like our country, get out. If you don't like our morals, get out. When people started getting out, then they start taking people's passports away. So make your mind up. You want people to stay or do you want people to go? Do you think people should be allowed to go and live in Syria and Iraq with ISIS if they want to? Why not? Do you understand, though, that why the security services will think that's a problem? No. I think we've got someone living in the UK who wants to go live with ISIS who are completely barbaric. I think the British government's barbaric. When they sit in Nevada, or when they sit in England, and send a drone to bomb little children thousands of miles away, that's barbaric. You're not even man enough to step in that country and go and kill your victim. That's barbaric. Any normal human person or Muslim would believe these views, but not many would say it openly. Have you got your passport? I've got a passport where it's pretty useless, because wherever I go, you get stopped, probably get turned back. There is some potential for these tactics to backfire. The overarching main threat to Britain at the moment is from Islamist extremist terrorism. So a lot of MI5 resources are targeted at the uh, Muslim community. And this, of course, raises all sorts of questions and dilemmas, particularly if some of the methods which may raise more ethical dilemmas get leaked or become publicly known. If MI5 or any of the security services uh, become t associated with dirty tricks, as they did, for example, in Northern Ireland, then one runs the risk of alienating entire communities and even radicalising entire communities against the state. So I, you know, I was on the convoys yeah. and I met Alan Henning yeah. as a result of that. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah. yeah. and he got beheaded yeah. by ISIS. I don't know how true it is, but I heard um, he did do a lot of charity work where he was collecting money and even his Christmas, his own Christmas, you know, he missed it because he was out there helping people. So how can you justify his beheading? There is an Islamic justification, I don't know how many people would agree with it, uh, is uh, that basically he did have an agreement with ISIS for his safety. So first of all, he broke them rules by going into a country without permission. And second of all, at age of uh, being a combatant. Do you think somehow, somewhere, that, his, his, that can be justified? Yeah, I do. If I was Jihadi John, I don't think I'd be able to chop the guy's head off. But you could accept it? Yeah, to a certain extent. This is why people think you're extreme. I love to have them sit down and debate with me. And then well, we'll see who comes out on top. Your views are exactly why MI5 would want you, though. Maybe, but then again, if my views are this extreme, then obviously they'd know that I'd never sell my faith you for might. their petty 100, 200 pounds, whatever it may be. Overall, these tactics are necessary. MI5 has got a very tough job to do, and they have to be able to 
gather intelligence. Now that inherently involves questions which are ethically troubling. They collaborate with the global banking system to bring masses of third world people into this country to replace, rape and murder our people. Do you think they're dangerous? Dangerous to whom? The public? Never. The people who are dangerous are the ones in control of uh, drones and bombs like the uh, UK government. 